Good evening, good evening. We are live um, and excited to be broadcasting my very first Women Who Win. So before we get started, I am going to share the broadcast from my Simply Tammy page over to my personal page. Um, and if you are already tuned in and watching with us, I ask that you do the same. Um, before we bring our guest on, Ms. Stephanie Blassengain, I think she's gonna share it on her page. So um, give me just a moment to share the broadcast and welcome all of you guys to my first Women Who Win. Um, so very excited. Um, these are going to be casual but transparent conversations that um, my goal is to encourage and inspire you. So each week um, I'm going to be bringing an amazing woman before your front. Some of them you may have heard of and know their story. Some of them you may not. And I'm just going to be asking them some questions. You guys that are watching with us can also interact with us through the comments. Um, and if you have questions, we will address those as well. So um, before I bring Stephanie on, I do have a quick announcement. Um, we have a prize tonight that has been sponsored by the Lip Beat, um, which is owned by Erica LaShawn Jones. Um, she recently launched her business here in the upstate of South Carolina. And I um, did a giveaway where I'm giving away some t-shirts to various healthcare workers and she wanted to be a part of that. So she actually donated a product to be given away with the t-shirts and she gave away also a gift card. And I thought it would be very fitting to give that gift card away on the broadcast tonight. So if you are a healthcare worker, preferably a nurse, and I'm saying a nurse because that's Erica's op occupation as well. Tag yourself in the comments as well as share this broadcast. And once we see the names tag, make sure that you, when you tag your name, you put, you know, I'm a nurse and happy nurses week to all of you that may be watching. And um, we're going to give away that gift card. She donated a $25 Amazon gift card and you have the ability um, to be eligible to win that if you're watching this broadcast tonight. So I'm not going to delay it any longer. I'm going to go ahead and bring on my guest, Miss Stephanie Blassengay. And before I dive into questions with her, um, she is a wife, she's a mother, she's a multipreneur, she's recently an author. She wears many, many hats and um, has an amazing story of conquering some challenges um, throughout life. So was so very excited when I had the had to substitute a guest in tonight um, because my original guest um, had was having some health issues. So we will reschedule her. Mandy, if, if you get to watch this, I hope and pray that you feel better soon. Um, but Stephanie was available and I am over elated. Stephanie is one of those people. I call her my friend. She's like a sister to me. She's one of those people when you pick up the phone on the other end, you just immediately start laughing. You don't even have to say anything. We just know ain't nothing really funny yet, but we start laughing. So I actually absolutely love um, the time that I get to be in her presence. So hello, Stephanie. Hello. I am looking down because I'm like, oh, this is us. We're on Facebook. <laughs> oh, yeah, I haven't. I, I shared the broadcast, but I haven't started watching it yet. But um, I know this is awesome. Awesome. Hey, Terry. Hey, hey friend. Um. So yeah, how how you feeling? I know when I talked to you earlier, you're like you just getting back in from walking two miles. So you still. Doing the first thing during this quarantine. I'm gonna tell you what happened. So I've been <laughs> in the quarantine. I like I'm a homebody. I like staying at home. But when I have to stay at home, I don't like it. So I started going out and walking and running every day. And so I was like, I'm gonna do at least two miles. And then I started hopping on the scale and but I was eating like crazy. And so I hadn't gained any weight, but I hadn't lost any either. And then I got on the scale and the scale had moved. So now I'm so motivated to get out there. So I went out and it was pouring down rain. And it, I mean, when I started, it wasn't, but it was pouring down raining and I was getting in the rain. So, yep, get my exercise in too. 
Good, good, good. We have a few people that are watching. Um, Katisha Mitchell says, hey. Hey, and my sister in Georgia, Cheryl, says hello. Hey, Cheryl. Hello. Thank you for watching. Miss Willa Sally in Columbia said good evening. Good evening, Miss Willa. So, Stephanie, um, we're going to jump right in. So, you just celebrated a monumental birthday. Um, happy belated. And um, she doesn't you. look her age. I'm not going to even get you into guessing. If you follow her, if you're friends with her, you know how old she is. Um, <laughs> And which is very exciting, but you have had a colorful background as far as career and business goes. So that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit tonight. Um, her business background as well as her relationship background. So there's some stuff that you don't want to miss that we're going to talk about tonight. So yes, we put starting it with you. All on the table. <laughs> you said you're putting it all on the table. <laughs> Cheryl says, happy belated birthday, beautiful. Thank you, Cheryl. <laughs> so um, career-wise, you have a military background. I have <laughs> Did the people even know about that? <laughs> I don't know. Some people do. Some people are still surprised and shocked as if, like, dang, the, the Army take anybody. They always like, hey, the Army for real, for real, for real. Yes, for real. So when I turned 18, graduated from high school, I went into the military. So I did two years in the military. Wow. Wow. So and you said that that was before you were married, right? Yes. That, OK. Oh, yeah. I was so, 18 at the time, right out of high school. OK, cool. So we got some other people coming in saying hello. Hello, Dr. Ish Shahara. Thank you for hello. joining us tonight. Yes. <laughs> yes, Miss Arisha Waves. Hey, Arisha, thank you for joining us tonight. So I want to talk about um, a little bit about your business background, because um, when I met you, when I first moved back to Greenville, I met you through my sister and I think we came to your house for a party. Um, you you had something that you were hosting. Um <laughs> So talk to me about your business background. What was the first business that you launched on your own? The first business I launched on my own was um, it was a jewelry business and we called it JLB Enterprise. So okay. I know we're going to get a little bit into how um, me and my husband met. But when um, like a year after we'd been married, um, we started a business. And okay. I worked in a call center for Bell South. It was Bell South at the time. Okay. And I was booming selling jewelry. And so we would travel to Atlanta every two weeks to place these orders and pick up jewelry and even got into selling diamonds. So that was our first business. You know, oh, wow. Okay. Free. So, oh, and I'm like, was it a lemonade stand? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think it was. <laughs> so it could be something <laughs> that I just can't think of it, but I think that was it. That was so it. with you bringing that up, you know, a lot of people have the entrepreneurial mindset early on as a child. You mentioned a lemonade stand. When did you know, um, was it your husband's idea to start the business or was it something that was always in you that said, I know I can do this on my own? What, when did you know? Well, it was kind of, uh, both of us, but I do think he was the one that's like, you know, let's kind of push this thing. And so he was hitting beauty salons and barbershops and I was just at work, hitting it at work, you know, okay. success there. But um, I've known since probably since I was a kid, I didn't know at the time that that's, this is what it was, but I've always had a leadership ability and, um, I, you know, people trust me. And so whenever I am about to launch a business, I have no fear of it being successful because, you know, people trust me. I'm not going to get into anything crazy. If I find out it is crazy, I'm going to jump out of it quick. <laughs> okay. So, so I kind of um, picked up on that, you know, early on in my childhood, just having those, you know, that type of personality. Okay. So you didn't have any qualms or fears when he was like, let's do this. You were ready. 
No, I did not. And I'm going to tell you why. And it's it's different now. And we're probably going to hit on that is because, like I said, I was in a call center. I was sitting at my desk and a book was just passing around and, um, you know, people were placing their orders that way. I didn't have to say anything. I didn't have to really, you know, do anything. And then I just became known as, you know, the jewelry girl, you know, at okay. Night. And so, you know, fast forward to now or, you know, some years later, I have these ideas and I have to, you know, launch them differently. And so it it does get kind of scary. And I have been, you know, afraid to just kind of jump out there. But what I've I've done um, is over the years, I've just surrounded myself. I call them my tribe with just people who are not afraid to do stuff. Right. And then right. people who are innovative, you know, have witty ideas and inventions and just creative and smart yes. and rich. I said all the time, all my friends are rich. All my fr- friends are beautiful. All my friends are smart. Every yes. last one of them. So yes. consider, you know, me a friend. You're one of those people because I'm very strategic in, you know, who I have in my tribe. You in my tribe, Tammy. You know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in my tribe, we, we are fierce. We are awesome, and so that encourages yes. me. And that inspires me. And when I have ideas, you know, I have places and people that I can say, "Hey, what you think about this?" Okay, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing now. And then, boom, my tribe is already supporting me. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah. Well, I, I, I wasn't afraid. That was that business where I didn't have to do nothing. But when I had to start really getting to the nitty gritty, it's right. so scary sometimes. Okay, so we're going to talk about that no fear personality that you have because we're about to jump into some of this relationship talk. Before I do that, I want to just make the announcement again. If you are on the broadcast, we have a giveaway sponsored by Sean Jones of the Lip Beat. It is a $25 Amazon gift card. We want to give it away to a nurse because it's Nurses Week and also Sean herself is a nurse. So we want to give back to some essential workers. And if you like lip gloss, I'm actually wearing one of her glosses right now. I will post her um, business um, in the comments so that you can go follow and support her. So in order to win the gift card, if you are watching the broadcast, comment on it your name and the the fact that you are a nurse. And we want you to also share the broadcast. And from those, we will pick from those names. We'll do a drawing and you will win that gift card. It's already packaged in an envelope ready to ship. So even if you are not local, um, she already, again, packaged it, put in an envelope. We'll get it in in the mail to you immediately. So um let's talk relationships um i know your story because i've known you for some time and um you and your husband have spoke at um one of my events as well as i read his amazing book plug for um jerry blasting game his book reclaim is amazing um so let's talk about how y'all met and uh how (laughs) y'all hooked up (laughs) And I love, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, put this disclaimer out there because I love it when you came to our workshop for couples. You were like, "Now I'm gonna tell you our story, but I ain't gonna tell you to try this on your own." <laughs> exactly. Do not try this on your own. If you are not seeing it, it's it's real. It's true. right. It really it. happened this way. <laughs> it really happened this way. <laughs> sure. So. Um, I was a single parent um, when I met Jerry and I, his sister and his grandmother lived in the apartment downstairs from me. And so we just kind of met in passing by being introduced by his sister. But then fast forward, um, we met in a nightclub, actually. So. Uh, yeah. OK, so <laughs> you met in a nightclub, started started dating. And um, was marriage right there on the horizon, or let's talk about how that happened? (laughs) No, this is where we keep it real. Okay, so (laughs) when we first met, Jerry and I both were married to somebody else. 
I know. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> Do not try this on your own. Do not try this at home. Disclaimer, disclaimer. If somebody's typing in comments, disclaimer, this is a unique love story. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so you both right. were married to other people. We, we were both married to other people. Okay. And I was not in a relationship in um in my marriage at the time. And so you so, were separated. Yes, I was separated. Okay. And so he was going through that transition of separating in his marriage. And so um, in the beginning, um, Jerry was a drug dealer in Greenville. He was one of the biggest drug dealers in Greenville. And uh, we just, we were raised up on opposite sides of the track, but you know, everybody, every every good girl likes a little thug passion in her life. So. <laughs> thug passion. <laughs> <laughs> So that was very um, thrilling. That life was very thrilling and exciting. Okay. And so um, whenever we would talk about marriage, we were not necessarily talking about marrying each other, but I would always make it clear that I was not going to marry him. I said, oh, I will never marry you. I'm going to marry me a Christian man because I wasn't saved at the time. And I had my own idea of what I thought a Christian man was. Okay. That's that all the time. Every time, you know, it would come up and I'd be like, mm -mm, you try I ain't marry you. <laughs> I'm a cookie man. So fast forward, um, if you want to go back and get some in between, fast forward, he goes to prison for selling drugs. And then um, we reconnect while he's in prison and he changes his life. He gets saved while he's in prison and he's pursuing me again to marry him. And he's wow. like, God told me that you're my wife. And I was like, I ain't marrying you. <laughs> you the God told him. Okay. I, I did not okay. go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how, how that went. And yeah, I turned him down over and over again. I'm like, no, nah, let's just be friends. You know, let's be pen pals or something. But no, I can't marry you. And, so, <laughs> and then he used to always also say, God told me that you're supposed to be my wife, but I can't marry you because you're not saved. So he said, Ruby, oh, he said it on you. Yes. And so I'm, like, I'm not going to say just so I can marry you because I'm not marrying you. So that's that was kind of, you know, right. Like, you look back on that, you know, 22 years later and laugh. But that's literally, you know, how it went down. OK. And he actually led me to the Lord while he was in prison. Wow. Um, and I finally said yes. But it wasn't because of him. I did see a change in him because I'd known him for so many years. And I could really you know, tell a difference um, when I actually came to visit him. I seen gotcha. it the very first time. And whenever I came back home, I wrote a letter and I told him, I said, I really want what you have. Not wow. want a relationship with him um, as a wife, but just to glean from him, mm -hmm. learn from him, because I could literally see a difference. His brother asked me to come with them to visit, you know, one time. And that was my first time, you know, going to visit him in prison and so we were all leaving um the visitation and so he was like jerry was like let's pray let me pray for y'all before we leave so his family is probably like six or seven of us and so we stand up in a circle and we're holding hands so now i'm i'm not saved at this point and so i'm looking at this difference in him and so i'm getting kind of warm and fuzzy again so <laughs> yeah everybody's holding hands like this and so getting I'm warm and fuzzy <laughs> jerry and i pulled it on him <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, he was treating me so, so cordial, and you know, in in the visit during the visitation, you know. And I thought, well, that's because his family is around. So we're all holding hands like this, and so I'm doing his hand like this, and he keep breaking that and doing it like this, and I keep trying to go back. You, you flirting? You flirting in the prayer circle? <laughs> right. <laughs> you can't bring it back to the Lord, and I can't go ahead. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ma'am, after, ma <laughs> after that visit, I was like, "Yeah, I really do want. I want what he got because I could just see peace over him, wow. and I, I just did not have any peace during that time. I can remember turning um, twenty-three years old and just saying." 
there has got to be more to my life than this. You know, I was clubbing. I had a son, a young son. And I actually went to the club sober. And God said, this is what you look like. And I remember seeing that. And then I didn't, I hadn't been back to the club, you know, since, you know, on that level. Wow. Wow. So, so yeah, it was a transition for me. It was. So fast forwarding just a little bit, because I, again, I, I read his book and I remember reading from his book that you were instrumental in his release from prison. Um. As, as far as, you know, when that process came up for him. Yeah. Um, my question to you is, were you guys, because the, the other part of the story that many people don't know is that you married him while he was still behind bars. Yes. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Disclaimer, 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 unique love story. <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't oh. If you do anything else, don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So uh, I so this, yes. this was post salvation. You you accepted. He led you to Christ. He led me to Christ. Okay. And um, Jerry, prior to that, he had been writing me letters. Okay. And so um, and the letters irritated me because I wasn't saved because I wish I. And thought to bring them down. I still have them. Mm. In a book one day. So and and then you'll know why when I tell you this that I can put them in a book. <laughs> I started every letter with a prayer, and he's like, "I beseech you, sister, in the name of Christ." And I'm like, "Hey, you're my boyfriend. Why are we talking about this? You know, I'm back to this. You know, <laughs> yes, yes. You still flirting." <laughs> you don't want no scriptures. You want to flirt. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Write me a nasty letter, okay? <laughs> <laughs> he he wasn't breaking. He, break. he is like the only person I know that does not backslide. He ain't at all. So in the so in the letters, whenever I would open them and I would see that, um, you know, how he would start them, I would just fold them and put them back. And so once I got saved, I went back to read the letters and he had actually put a lot of scriptures in there, his scripture study. So I learned a lot from the letters about the word. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, God spoke to me. And because I was in fear that if I married him and he got out of prison, that he was going to resort back to the way things were. And then okay. I'm like the fool. And so God spoke to me and he said, don't trust the man. Trust me in the man. Wow. And, he, and I literally heard that. And that is the reason why I married Jerry Blessing Game. So if you are listening and those of you that have been commenting, I think that is worth repeating. Um, that's part of this love story being so unique because she heard from God, don't trust the man, trust me in the man. Now, if you ain't heard those words, I advise you not to try it. We are that disclaimer, disclaimer. This is the blessing game love story. <laughs> but that that is amazing that he spoke to you. So one of the things that intrigues me about this story, you accept Christ, you marry him while he's there. Did you know at the time that you said I do to him that he was going to be getting out as soon as he did? Or were you prepared to be his wife for the full length of, the, of his original sentence? I was prepared to be his wife the full length of the sentence. In the natural, I did not know. But by faith, we believed that he was going to be getting out. Okay. His story is when he got on the yard, he was in prison. He was sentenced to 20 years. He did three and a half years. And for three and a half years, he confessed, I'm not going to be here long. I'm not going to be here long. I'm not going to be Y'all hear that? He got 20 years. He did three and a half years, but he did that based on a daily confession of what did you say stephanie i'm not gonna be here long. i'm not gonna be here long yeah um, and he had already um made a covenant with god that when he got out that he would serve him yes and so i i cut my teeth studying with my husband in prison versus being in church. I, I was going to church and going with my aunt and uncle you know at the time but he 
didn't have church. He didn't grow up in church. And so their church were the guys in prison just studying the scriptures. Mm. And so I learned, you know, from him. So he was my pastor. You know, he was a lay minister uh, there. And so I, I learned from him you know, at that time. Wow. Wow. So um, segue into the next part. You said he said that he had already promised God that he was going to serve him. So those of us that in Greenville and nationwide, he, he is known um, for what he has begun. So Tyria and, and you partnered with him in that. So now you are, you are already a mother, you are a wife, he's released and you guys launched this nonprofit organization. So tell us a little bit about that and how that transition was from going from, you know, you had a regular job. Now you have a man with a strong vision and a passion and you have to follow oh, no him. <laughs> a strong vision and passion and no job. <laughs> tell, tell, us, tell us about that marriage story. <laughs> okay, this is, uh, this is love and blessing game. That's what we got. <laughs> so, um, so of course I'm I am smitten. I'm in love. I'm living by faith, and there are a lot of intricate details that took place um, whenever um, Jerry was released from prison. So we got married February the 28th, 1998, and so um, not long after that, he received a letter saying that he was going up for parole. Well, he's not he at this time not supposed to go up for parole for seven and a half years, and he had done three. And so everybody, you know, the naysayers, especially the guys that were in there with him, they was like, man, they made a mistake. You ain't going to get out. You know, that's a mistake. So what we started doing um, was just putting action to our faith. And so um, God just led me on a path of places where I had not burnt bridges. And this is what I teach my kids or anybody who's listening do not burn bridges with people because you never, ever know how you may need that person again. If you're on a job and you got a supervisor that is a butt turd, just don't burn that bridge right. that you don't like because you never know how that will come back around. And when it comes back around, it's only the way God only God can set it up that way. And so in high school, uh, Lillian Brock Fleming was my high school teacher. Yes, she was one of my favorites. And one so, of mine too. She taught me algebra at Southside. <laughs> I love Miss Women. <laughs> and so she was my math teacher too. And so um, I reached out to her, and then she led me to Senator Ralph Anderson and gave me his home phone number. I called his house. His wife answered the phone. He wasn't there. And she was like, tell me what you need. And I told her, my husband is going up for parole and we don't know what to do or where to turn. And she gave me a South Carolina book that has everybody that works for the government in South Carolina and um, what cities they live in. And so the probation part and parole, um, all of their, their names are in there. Wow. And I use that. And I just started, you know, working from there. And so with that, I, you know, I encountered her. So I'm working a job at Bell South. Mm -hmm. I have these people's names and the city that they live in. And so I go into the system and I didn't do anything illegal. That's why I'm telling <laughs> you. And I just pulled up their account. Mm -hmm. And so I contacted them. Mm -hmm. And so they all were very instrumental in, in helping me with just information on what they expect when we show up for parole. So mm -hmm. at my supervisor at um, Bell South, some of the other ladies who had been there for years, they were just rude to her and mean to her and racist towards her. And her name is Arlene and I love her even to this day. Uh, her daughter and I are good friends as well, Kim. And they used to call her Arlena the Hun. Oh, I'm like what in the world? Because they're like, God, my mama will still get me as a grown person, you know. Right. Everybody. And so I, she and I, we just chit chatted. We talked all the time. And so um, I'm going through this list of the um, the probation, um, pardon and parole list, the parole. And when I get to this one guy, I'm talking to him. And on the phone, I talked to everybody on the phone. He's like, where do you work? And I said, I work for Bell South. He was like, I do too. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Don't ask me how I got your number. <laughs> Uh, right. And so uh, so he told me that he worked there. He'd been there for like 30 years or whatnot. So I was like, okay, great. So we chit-chatted. I go back to work. So Arlene calls me into her office. And so I go in there. I'm thinking we're going to chit-chat like we normally do. And she said, I know somebody that you just met. And so she told me, I can't think of his name now. And she told me who he was. And she said, we're really good friends. And he asked about you because you told him that you worked at Bell South. And I told him how awesome you were. And I'm like, what if I had been calling her? Right. Oh, what, what if you had joined you? the crowd? <laughs> That's right. Do not join the crowd. <laughs> yes. Yes. Crowd. So that was, you know, one of the miraculous things that just took place. And that God uh, made the proper connections for you. I yeah. started so by faith, putting my actions, uh, my faith into action. Um, I went to the post office and I forwarded Jerry's address from prison to my house. Mm -hmm. like, we just going to get all your stuff sent here. And the last facility he was in, he was allowed to have a television, a VCR, all these books. So every visit I would go on the weekends, I'd bring all that stuff back home. And those guys were like, she's going to be bringing that stuff right back. She's going to bring it back. And so we go up for parole. It only takes a few minutes. If anybody's familiar with that, you go in, you're probably in there with them, maybe three to eight minutes. Uh -huh. and we had a group of people who were speaking on his behalf. And when we were walking out, somebody said, don't they make a cute couple? And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> the police. And so it was so it was three of them. And then, you know, our big our big crew. And so um, they let you know, like, you know, within a few minutes. So we just stood out there. And that day, he was one of the only ones that made parole. And I was on the floor because I'm like, oh, God, it's real. You know, it's real. Yes. I, I actually, when it comes to my faith level now, sometimes I have to go back to those mm -hmm. days and, yes. draw, and draw from that because you know, we were just so zealous for the Lord and just on fire. And with Jerry says it all the time, I just feel like I can fly. And I'm like, don't do it because he has the, the greatest faith of anybody. I yes, honey. Like, when I tell you his book provoke me, it's like my, yeah. it, it's like if God speaks it to him, he's like, okay, let, let's roll with it, God. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that was it. If God, it's, it's done. If, if God says it's done, you know, that's so I think it's amazing how he led you to the Lord. Um, but once you connected with him, you married him, married him. And even while he was still behind prison bars, your faith began to increase and you became his partner in faith. Yes, so you yes. had to join your faith with his, regardless of what people may have been saying to you on the outside, what people were saying to him on the inside. You guys were able to become solid together yes, until yes. you saw that manifestation. Yes, yes. yes. So, so in prison, he did a Greek study, um, and he and God gave him the word soteria, and the Greek mm -hmm. word for soteria means salvation and restoration and healing and hope, and so that's what he named his his nonprofit. God had already shown him. Vision of people just kept returning during those three and a half years. He just started asking them, why? Why are y'all back? And they just, they didn't have places to live. They couldn't find jobs. They couldn't afford to be on probation because they had fees. And so he would um, just write the vision out. When he walked out of prison, he walked out with a box and it was full of paper of the vision that he had written. And so I just typed that up over time. And that's how I got all of the intricate details of the vision. But you know, as a visionary yourself, it's hard to get it all out of your head to somebody mm -hmm. like that now. And so I had years of his vision on paper. Right. I added to that, you know, over time as well. But now I'm walking with him. So it's a little bit, bit easier. And so that's how I learned the vision. That just got me really excited because that was like Habakkuk 2 in operation yes. while he was in prison he wrote it down when he got out he gave it to you for you to type it and now the two of you together were able to run with it yeah. lord have mercy we ain't gonna preach on here tonight but that <laughs> made me really happy <laughs> so um so Tyria has been in existence for how many years now 20 years wow wow 20 years, 20 years in september last year so we're going in the year 21 right now 
Okay, and it is a an amazing nonprofit organization here in the upstate um, that helps. Is it you guys help men and women, or is it just men? We help men and women, but we only house men. So anybody okay. that's getting out of prison, we work with them like that last year in prison to help them transition back out of society. So we do job training, we do housing, we do. Um, we employ, you know, as well. And we mainly only employ people who have a criminal background record. So we're just kind of, you know, we're on the flip side of, okay. of people, like, you don't want you to have a clean record, but we're on the gotcha. flip side. Gotcha. So, um, by now you, your wife, your, your mother, how many children do you and Jerry have? Cause you already had a son. <laughs> so you guys had a blended family upon getting married and yeah. married and then you guys have some children together right yes so i had one son he was eight when um jerry and i married and jerry had two sons and okay so the three boys and then we had one child together and that okay. was the fourth boy okay we were like we're done and then <laughs> oh god i'm pregnant again so let, me <laughs> let me tell y'all how i got pregnant not not any intricate details. I was gonna say they might already know that stuff. <laughs> know. But um there was a lady who would go in and do prison ministry um in the prison. So she played the piano and she'd do Bible study with the guys. And Jerry's last um, place he was in prison was Abbeville County Prison Farm. And so she lived in Abbeville, and so she would go into the prisons there. Well, her son passed, and that was her last living relative. And when Jerry got out of prison, she would invite us to come and have lunch with her, you know, every now and then. So her house used to be a bed and breakfast. It's on the town square of Abbeville County. And I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. It's about an hour away from Greenville, close to Greenwood. And okay. they actually filmed Sleeping with the Enemy, the movie. They filmed that there in Abbeville. So that's kind of um, some popularity for Abbeville there. But um, she offered Jerry to buy her house. Mm. I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I done, I done did all this. I ain't going to Abbeville, right? <laughs> so, I'm going to get you with this one, Tammy, because we don't already said this one time before. He said, God said. Okay. So, somebody's like, how y'all end up in Abbeville? I'd be like, because he said, God said. Because <laughs> <laughs> he said, God said. And uh, did you do it with your eyes rolling, Stephanie? I can't argue with you. I can't argue with it. So that's why I'm here. So that explains why I kept getting pregnant because I was in the country and I didn't have anything to do. <laughs> Nothing to do. So Abbeville is the reason for how many more children? We're having three children together. So we have four boys and two girls on the end. So they're all teenagers now. So they're 17, 15, and 14. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. So I was in the country. Um, I had made, we had both made friends, which we partner in ministry and have really good friends with the Mennonite community in Abbeville. And Jerry's like, always like, go hang out with the Mennonite ladies. The Mennonites are a branch off of the Amish. And I, they all got a bunch of kids. So, <laughs> I can't play you with them because this is what's happening. <laughs> well, that, that's not my destiny and my plan. <laughs> <laughs> not my destiny. So we went from, um, we did eventually move back to Greenville, but we went from me working with him in the ministry with Soteria to me staying home with babies. Because wow. Y'all heard their ages. They was like back to back to back. They just kept coming. Lord. Mm -hmm. And so now that's not sufficient. Yes. <laughs> so um, so that we can begin to to wrap this up. Um, if you guys are listening and you have questions for Stephanie, you can drop those um in the comments and I can see them and, and we may take a question or two if time permits. Um you you have as I said, an amazing story. Um, even beyond Soteria, I know that you have kept that tenacity on your own and launched some businesses beyond that. Um, you know, you, you've started some and, and, you know, had to close some, make, making transitions. So um, what is it that, that still drives your desire 
to launch a new business because you have a lot a lot of women who have ideas who think they want to do it on their own and you said you know you've yeah. kind of known from early on some of the characteristics um what is it that keeps telling stephanie i can do it Oh, and I, I put a question, and I can do it. And I told Jerry, I was like, "Look, I want to do this." He's like, "Oh my God, Stephanie, here we go again." <laughs> so one, um, the freedom that comes with being a business owner. Okay, um, I have the freedom to be everywhere I need to be for my family. Mm, freedom. So, so freedom. I love that freedom. I have the freedom to. Um, teach and support, you know, other people in their businesses or just friends and family. So I, I love the freedom. Yes, yes. I feel like when, when God, God has given all of us something. How many times have we sat and watched an infomercial and be like, "Dang, that's them, my idea." <laughs> <laughs> Out of that, right? Like how did how did get that out of my head? Right, <laughs> do it, and we are we are so conditioned to teach our children to go to school and get a degree and work somebody else's job. And I'm not saying anything is wrong with that because somebody has to work, you know, everybody's business. But we never teach our kids to, you know, go to school, get a degree and learn somebody else's job or launch your own business. Mm -hmm. And whenever people um, come to me or come to my classes, if they're already working somewhere, especially somewhere that's in their field, even if it's not, you can glean from where, right where you are. That's what I'm doing right now on the job that I work. It's a transportation business. I have a transportation business and it's on, we're on two totally different levels right. um, of who we, you know, who we transfer. And so um, I just learned so much about how to do business just by being, you know, in the atmosphere, how to treat employees and how to treat customers and how to care for people. And, def and in my company, it's a Christian based company. And I love that. And, you know, yeah. we can it first and in the vision, you know, as well. So I, I really do love the freedom. And then the other thing is just really <clears throat> Because when I had these ideas, um, in the beginning, I just jumped on and I'm out there working something and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm spinning wheels and spending money and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, just connecting and having the right people in my tribe, I have tools and places that I can go and people I can turn to. Like you, for instance, we were at a birthday party and um, I you know, heard about what you were doing and I and God was like, it's time. And I had written a book and I'm like, oh. Tammy, I'm going to reach out to you. This is going to be this year. You remember that? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, told you, I said, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> God said, you know. Yes. And so, you know, we just went from there. So just doing it afraid is okay. Is my thing. Do it afraid. Yes. Now, I like that you brought up the fact that you are working right now, even though you're still an entrepreneur and you still have businesses, because I think that's an amazing testimony to how even being connected to the company that you're working for is still a resource because you're learning so many things that you can take and help develop the business that you still have and grow it and, and flourish from that. So, um, I think that's one of the fears that a lot of people have with entrepreneurship. I know that I can, this is not going to sustain me on its own. And initially it doesn't have to. You learn and you grow with your business. So so thank you um, for sharing that. So, yes, Stephanie recently published her book. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so yes. She, um, as she mentioned when she told me about it, the girl already had a finished book, y'all. I didn't know. She had wrote it, she had illustrations. So I'm like, so what's the problem? <laughs> so we were able to me. go ahead and move forward. Um <laughs> ran into a few snags, but we we persevered. It yes. was like uh but um people are like where did you learn that book i'm like i don't know i started <laughs> in december of 2019 
<laughs> right, right. It is a children's book. It is called The Day My Sister Gave Me the Hiccup. So I'm going, we're going to give you Stephanie's connection information at the end of this call. So you are able to connect with her, um, grab you a copy of this book for any little people in your life. Um, since they are home, I'm sure you guys need some extra reading materials. And her book is a wonderful addition to that. Yeah, and if so, you're a children's books or a collector of black author books, you ain't got to have no kids at home to have my book in your house. Very so, true. If you collect children's books or if you just like to support black authors and collect their books, you can um go ahead and add Stephanie Blass and Gaines' first book to your collection because there's some more coming. Um, and it is soon to be released in Spanish. So the English, <laughs> this is the English version and the Spanish version is coming out very soon. Um, so again, if you guys have some questions for Stephanie, you can drop them in the comments. So I want to um, talk to you a little bit about balance. Um, how do you, you know, being a wife, having a ministry, having these, having children that are still in school, having businesses, mm -hmm. You work. What what is the one thing I'm just going to ask for one key piece of information that helps you balance? Is it one? Okay. So <laughs> I have always prayed for a balanced life and literally to a, at a place for some years, pray for it like every single day. And then my sweet friend Shayla Lloyd, she she was shout out to Shayla, <laughs> shout out to Shayla. Mm -hmm. And so she was speaking one day. Actually, she was a speaker in um, my business entrepreneur class. I had her in as a guest speaker. Okay. And, um, she was sharing how when you're balanced, you're staying still. You're standing mm -hmm. still, and it should be harmonious. And so I, ever since then, I'm like praying for a harmonious, balanced lifestyle. So I'm like, what does that look like for me? And so my yeah. other friend, Kimberly Joy Morgan, who's- Shout out to Kimberly Joy. <laughs> she's listening. But um, she um, had me put everything in a circle. She has a circle and she has, you know, put in there um, what's important to you from the outside, you know, all the way in closer to you. And so I did that. And so I learned that my life, uh, my health, um, all of that includes my family, my marriage, my children, my friends, um, where I go to church, my, my spiritual life, what I eat, how I exercise, where I work. All of that is included in the harmonious um, balanced life. Yes, yes. So I can't always work on all of those things at one time. Right. That is what was overwhelming me. Yes. So once again, my tribe, and my tribe includes my husband. Mm -hmm. And so um, things change, you know, often. Like we just got uh, my first announcement. I became a grandmother yesterday. Yay! I'm a little girl. <laughs> Mara, like giving Amara a shout out. And so um, things happen. Life happens. And so, right. like, you know, we got a grandbaby in the mix. You know, yes. and so we just flow with that. We we can't stop. I still have to be a wife. I still have mm -hmm. to be a mother. Now I have to be a grandmother, but I still have to go to work. I, can, I can't stop. So I just balance it, you know, as God shows me how. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to order my steps, you know, when it comes to that. And so mm -hmm. having a great support system, it really matters. And a lot of times it may not be your family. Some people may live away from their family, but you can they can still support you in words and you know in conversation. But mm -hmm. find your tribe. If you want to be a part of my tribe, now you got to be cool, you got to be rich, you got to be beautiful. You got yes. To be <laughs> all of that. <laughs> a beautiful inside. I mean, all of that. So so find you a tribe, you know, people that you can bounce off of. And then you have to learn how to trust because um, like during my classes or talking to people, people, you know, want to talk to me about businesses, starting a business, but they don't want to share what their business is. And so I get that. But this is how I feel about that. If God gives you an idea, if you don't move on it fast enough, you ain't the only person he gave it to. Believe that. 
Wow. <laughs> you, that <laughs> okay. <laughs> That information. I got a book of so many ideas, and so mm. I'm in a position where I'm just, you know, I'm just working. On it. I got an invention that's coming out next. So I ain't gonna talk about it yet. I ain't ready. I'm not ready. Gotcha. It's we'll coming. let you hold that. One. We'll let you hold that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be helpful. It'll help everybody. Yeah. So, so when it comes to to that, you just you have to have um, look at your circle. And you have to work on everything. You can't be unhealthy physically or what you eat and try to run a business because you're going to run yourself in the ground. You can't be unhealthy and try to care for a family because you're going to run yourself in the ground. So health is a, a very important part of it. You know, that's that's my my platform. It's like your health, your health, your health. And that's how mm-hmm. One of my businesses, um, Young Living yes. Essential Oils. So yes. Yay. I have lavender on now because I'm like I'm gonna come on cool, calm, and collected, and do <laughs> my form. And so, and I have brain power diffusing behind me, so <laughs> I don't forget nothing. So, <laughs> when it comes to that, um, you know that balance. You know, once again. Consider your health. We as black people, especially, we will mm. put our health on the back burner. And, you know, it looks so noble to be caring for somebody. But, you know, you're overweight and you're sluggish and you're mm. always sick and you're always sleeping. You always don't feel good. It's something going on. And, you know, look into that. So 10 years ago, I was feeling all of that. I went into a deep depression for mm. three I was in this depression and then I just started fighting my way out. I realized I had too much God in me. I just let this thing take me out. Wow. I'm out taking any medicines. Um, I thought about it. I thought about other things. I thought about suicide and mm-hmm. but I had little kids and, you know, a husband that I had to think about as well. And so I just started fighting my way out of that and just believing what the word says about me, what God says about me and how he thinks about me. And I started believing those things. So that's why I'm so awesome because yes. God says I am. And yes. you can be too. You can be yes. And so that's how I got started with um, essential oils, just taking control of my own health and experimenting you know, with my own health and trying different things. Okay. Um, so yeah, I like, I like the, the analogy you gave of, about balance and, and having a harmonious lifestyle. And it, um, that when you, um, talked about things changing up uh, maybe about a year or two ago, um, I talked to some of my young women about balance because we, we all experience the same thing. It's impossible to keep everything in balance at the same time. So, um, at, uh, maybe about two years ago, I think it was the Lord told me, um, allocate properly so my word instead of balance is allocation okay you give what needs your attention at that time the proper attention the proper time and like you said you have to be healthy whole and well to be able to do that but everything can't get all of you at one time so i try to properly allocate my time to what needs me at that moment so you mentioned um, being in a depression and, and one of your signature things, if anybody knows you, comes runs into you, is your smile. You have a radiant smile. You have a radiant personality. Thank you. you um, exude sunshine, laughter. Like I said, I think when we talked on the phone today, before we, after hello, we bust out laughing just, just for the sake of busting out laughing. Um, <laughs> but has there been a time in your life and maybe it was this period that you just alluded to where your smile was at risk of not returning. What Um, was that and how did you get back from that? Well, because of my smile, I have, and my personality, and we all do it. We teach people how to treat us, period. Everybody's heard that. Oh, that's good. We teach people how to treat us. I'm listening, but I'm going to type that in my own self. And so whenever I started feeling sluggish and tired and inside wanting to do something, but just physically could not do anything, I went to my doctor and my doctor was like, 
Stephanie, you just need to get outside and get you some vitamin D and play with your kids and, you know, get a garden in your yard and just tell me all these ah, things. And I'm like, I would really like to do that, but I don't, I just don't want to just, you know, it's just, I just didn't have it in me. And so, so this, you were, you were depressed at this time and you went to your doctor because yes. you were feeling, okay. Yes. And his, his, his yes. suggestion was to get some vitamin D. It sounds like. Yes. Okay. He was actually the one that started me running, and I went back and shared that with him because he's a runner. And so he was like, You got to run. And I'm like, Black people don't run. I'm not going <laughs> running. You know, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Well, I actually went to another doctor, a nurse practitioner. I'm like, I'm going to a female. And her uh, mom was married to um, a pastor, her stepdad. And so she would be like, Stephanie, I can understand that. That pastor's wife, life, I see it with my mom all the time. And she's like, just pray. And, you know, she's telling me. And I'm still coming home feeling the same. So finally, I went into the doctor's office and I just cried. And I'm like, something is wrong with me. I am broken. My family doesn't understand it. I said, either I'm extremely lazy or it's something that's going on with me. And so we just started doing some extensive tests. And um, I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Mm. Depression is one of the side effects of that. But because of my relationship with God, he showed me that there was something else there. And so okay. at that time, um, I had suppress a lot of things and so i always call myself a professional suppressor i think we all are we don't mm -hmm. want to do it we just press it down mm -hmm. i came to the realization at the age of 40 that when i was a child i had been molested over a six-year period by one of my friend's father mm. so i had to you know deal with that and so that's kind of what took me spiraling into this depression and then um, also realizing and i knew it but i just kind of um suppressed it like i said and just kind of looked at it as a difference versus yeah. saying i was molested or i was raped i was not ever claiming that it's just that i was in a bad relationship it's kind yeah. of I was you know, dealing with it. I, but I think we do that sometimes because when we're able to pick up life and develop a rhythm, we think that that part is okay too. Yeah. Yeah. Until it surfaces again. Exactly. <laughs> so this happened to me from the age of eight to the age of 14. And so mm. I went into the military. And when I went into the military, I, I think it surprised me. I know people are always surprised, but I went in running from an alcoholic father, just wanting to get out of that house. And so when I got into the military, I was raped over a period of time by several officers and sergeants there. Mm. And so I'm like, here it is again. So I'm suppressing it again. So fast forward, I'm 40 years old. Jerry and I have been married, what, um, 10, 11 years. And um, I see this show that Oprah has, and it opened my eyes. She was um, interviewing people who had um, victimized people. Um, set through sexual abuse. And so when it happened, it's like the realization happened. I really literally stood up and looked in the mirror and I was like, dang, girl, you've been raped. You've been molested. Like, wow. Like, the first time. Yeah. So like a flood of emotions. And then immediately I was like, okay, but you 40, you, you know, you got a good marriage. Like, you got children. <laughs> let's put this back where it was. And so the next day, the Holy Spirit would not let me leave it alone. And so I shared it with Jerry. And I remember sharing it with him. He was leaving for work and then he just collapsed on the bed. And he was like, Stephanie, you just don't realize how angry I am that this happened to you. But you answered so many questions that I've had about you for years. He said, I was literally planning to leave you. And I didn't know. I thought my man would be great. <laughs> so, so I right. Like, like, I didn't get that memo. I didn't get that memo. <laughs> what you plan to do? <laughs> so that was like a wake up call for me and him both. And it really strengthened our marriage at that point because I ended up going um, through counseling. I went through um, um, rape and molestation counseling. And then I went through spiritual counseling for some years and I still go through counseling. And so that's another stigma um, with the community, um, the black community. Um, when I 
um, talked to my parents about it. And I started asking them, y'all, will y'all come to counseling with me? And they're like, yeah, we'll go for you, but you know, we ain't going. And mm-hmm. so, you know, we'll go, we'll go to help you, but I don't know why you going in there talking to them white people. <laughs> <laughs> but we got some black counselors too, y'all. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, so that was, um, counseling was very instrumental in, in uh, my life at that time. And so, and I think it still is because we all need an outlet. Um, I've been an outlet for other people, mm-hmm. but other people, I can't always be an outlet to them. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a place now where wow. I, can, I can't get it all out to my husband because he's not equipped for everything that I have right. going on inside of me. Right. And so that was a turning point. So that three year period from age 40 to age 43, was when my smile turned upside down. So um, I just kind of, I fought my way out because I really analyzed my life and um, God took me through a lot to um, get me to where I am now, to get me back. So I am healed. I am whole. I don't take no medicines, <laughs> none of that stuff. I use God to get me to where I am today. Yes, that that is amazing. Um that you have a period of time that marked your adult life because of something that occurred in your childhood. Um, yeah. And even the fact that you were exhibiting behaviors from it in your marriage and you didn't realize it, but you was about to be getting some pain. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Jared was about to be like, it's been real. <laughs> it's not real. going to the kids too. Okay. okay. <laughs> But I need you to come back every night. <laughs> wow. So that that is that's amazing. Um, that God ushered you through that healing process and helped show you what it was that you needed to do oh, yeah. to restore the smile that's 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 your signature now. Um so girl, we have been talking for an hour. We should have known this was gonna happen. We were not planning to keep y'all on here for an hour. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to bring Stephanie back. If you want me, if you want me to bring Stephanie back, let me know. I do have some other guests lined up, but we can we can um get her back on because this week a lot of it has not been told. So I, I encourage you um to get her book, whether you have a child or not. We want to get her book and we're going to share her contact information. Her husband also has a book. Um, and, and once you connect with her, you can ask her about that information. We'll, we'll we'll just channel everything through Stephanie. So as we get ready to wrap up, um, the last thing that I want you to do, Stephanie, for the people that are watching, whether it's, it's women or men, you have such an expansive background, be it from business perspective, be it from being a wife, a mother, now a grandmother, helping run a ministry being a first lady for a period of time. Um, what what period of advice would you want to leave with the audience? It could be someone that's watching that's scared to launch their business. It could be, could be someone that's watching or listening that wants to give up, that has gone mm-hmm. through, depre- through depression and don't see their way out. So whatever you're feeling led to share, because I know that um, you're a spiritual being and I, I believe that, that God will give you what is needed Um, in this moment to share. So I'm going to just open you up to say what's on your heart to leave an encouraging and inspirational word to our listeners. Okay. You learn the true meaning of that the the longer you live. And so I just turned 50. We never said my age, but I'm 50 years old. Last week. Last Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And so over the past few years, I have seen that life is just too short and things that I have been afraid to do. I, when I actually do them, it takes me such a short amount of time. And I'm like, well, dang, I could have had this rolling, you know, years ago and been on wow. to something else. And so because life is too short, you see this virus, you know, trying to wipe the whole world out. Life is too short. So yes. afraid. I got a t-shirt that says do it afraid. I got it from my friend Twiggy. I think she's Trisha on um Trisha DeBoer on uh, Facebook. Mm-hmm. But she um did a conference and I was one of the speakers at her conference and she kept talking about how she was doing it afraid. 
Yes. Right, man, that's it. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but mm -hmm. there are things that do scare us. Mm -hmm. and so do it afraid. If you mm -hmm. fail, that's what you're supposed to do because that's how you learn from your mistakes. Right. Do it afraid. So whatever it is, life is too short. Do it afraid. Get you a good tribe. If you want to be in my tribe, you remember the qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, what, what, we cute, we rich. Yeah. We cute, we rich, we smart. <laughs> we yes. yes. So, so definitely do it afraid. And if you are afraid, talk to somebody who's doing what you want to do. And I know that's another stigma. People are thinking, you know, I'm not going to help this person because they're going to take my customers or I don't want to tell them my secrets or what I'm doing. We can always share without telling everything, but always, you know, help a sister and a brother up, you know, to mm -hmm. where they come to. So, yeah, do it afraid and connect with people and learn. Never stop learning. Once you stop yes. learning, you will go to glory. So yes. always, always be open to learning. Always. Yes. And I, I like what you said about, you know, talking to to people who are doing what you're doing. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily tag myself as a person who doesn't meet any strangers, but I'm definitely no longer afraid to vocalize or talk about what it is that I need. And I think that's imperative, especially yeah. that's that was one of the catalysts for me moving forward with this, because I anytime I'm given the opportunity to talk to a group of women, I believe that your sister's story may be holding your freedom. Oh God. But God. you're bound because your sister won't open her mouth. Yes. So these types of platforms and, and um, Dr. S said earlier, Stephanie, thank you for your transparency. When you are willing, because God has already removed the shame from your story, you're already out of it, you're already delivered. He's brought your smile back. You are sunshine. So why would you not share to bless someone else's life and know that they can conquer whatever it is they're facing because God brought you out of it. That's so true. thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, how can we connect with you? You, um, you know, we didn't even really talk about the fact that you no. do classes for entrepreneurs. So yeah, there is, we, we already had a few people say they want a part two. So we, okay. we're going we, <laughs> to have to, we're going to do a Stephanie special edition. It might not be on this. this no, day. No, I gotta get a snippet. So I don't teach the classes anymore. I do share okay. with all the people because I'm on the board now. And oh, so wow. I'm not teaching anymore, but uh, villagelaunch.org. Just look that up. And that's okay. where the classes are. Villagelaunch.org. Okay. Yeah. Wait, um, you can get information on that website uh, where you can take the classes there um, here in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, if you're interested in connecting with me through my book, I'm Stephanie, the author at gmail.com. Or you can go to Stephanie, the author, the Facebook page. And the book is the, the uh, picture that's on the page. I think it's some other things that pop up um, under Stephanie, the author. Okay. okay. And then you can connect with me on Facebook um, with under Stephanie Gray Blessing Game. So if you request to be my friend, message me and let me know how we know each other. If you can say it's through this broadcast, because I speak at different places. And when I come back, I have a flood of um, Facebook friends, and I, I don't know your faces. I don't know. I'm right. looking around. I'm like, we got two friends in common. We got 200 friends in common. And I'm like, I do not know this person. I can't and let so you in. <laughs> I can't let you in. Look, I can vouch for that. You be like, Tammy, do you know such and such? I think she, Stephanie, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. And I'm also on Instagram. You got to do the same thing on Instagram. I'm on Instagram is Step Gray Blast on, on okay. Instagram. And so, uh, yeah, let me know. Send me a, a, a message. I, I look at all my messages and stuff for DM and um, let me know, you know, how you know me and how we're about to be friends or how we may not be friends. May not but, be friends. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> because I don't delete them. I have a slew of them sitting in there and I'm like, maybe I'll bump into this person again and they'll say, hey, I'm trying to be your friend. And I'll say, oh, there it is. So, yeah, please let me know. Gotcha. I'd love to be your friend. Good, good, good. So thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, I, I, I believe um, this, was what, this was what God wanted for tonight. Again, we are praying for, for Mandy's quick healing, but thank you so much for being available um, and being so transparent with your story 
And um, again, thank you to Sean Jones for the donation. I'm going to go through these comments. I think I already know um, we did have a healthcare worker that was on here that was chiming in. Um, so if I don't see any other nurses names in the comments that shared the story, um, that person will be be gifted that twenty dollar Amazon gift card. So um, we're going to get ready to wrap things up. Um, I'm going to say the same thing. You better so, say it then. <laughs> so I want, to give a, I want to do a giveaway as well. So if there's a healthcare worker or a nurse, since we're honoring um, our nurses, that has a child that's age eight or younger, then I'm going to donate my book. To okay. That. I'm not um, sure if you're doing your are you doing a drawing or something? How you well I was it? I was going to, to do a drawing. Um so I do know that there are some people on here that do have small children. So again, if I don't see the nurse, I think I see a name that we can give the book to. So okay. I'll I'll say that one more time. You'll pick the name. You can okay. say who I need to write it out to. And then I will autograph it for you. Cool bean. So we have an additional giveaway. We have the um Giveaway from the Lip Beat, um, and now a giveaway from Stephanie. She's giving away one of her books, The Day My Sister Gave Me the Hiccup. It's an amazing, amazing children's book. So thank you guys for joining in and making this easy for us um, tonight. This was the very first Women Who Win segment. Um, so we will be back next week at 8.30. So I will be posting that flyer um, either later this evening or tomorrow to let you know who my guest is next week. And um, thank you guys for joining. Thank you again, Stephanie. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Love you too.